We're continuing to collect pieces for the key to time. We're halfway through. Ooh. We're on piece number four now. Ooh. Brings us to the Androids of Tara. Ooh. Episode 101, season 16, episode four. Wahoo. Wow. Wow. What, what is Tara and why are there androids on it, dear? Uh, they did have thick butts, I will say. At least one of them did. That was nice. I mean, if you're going to make an android, wouldn't you put a thick butt on it? Absolutely. I w wouldn't you? Anyway, uh, the doctor's playing chess with K-9 and K-9 is going to win because he was programmed with literally every chess thing ever. And the doctor is like, hey, do you remember the key to time thing? Uh, we should probably go do that. And Romana's like, OK, I guess I'll do it. So they land in this entire forest of like witch eye trees, which if you don't know are birch trees and they look like it's, it's, it's don't worry about it. Uh, it's also known as Tara. Also, wow, I shouldn't give you trouble, Romana. Go on, go get changed like the lady you are while I go look for something. It's my fishing pole. I want to fish. And Morgana apparently looks like the Riddler and off of the two of them go. The doctor goes to take the day, got day off and fish and it's Romana's job to do shit today. He's only going to spend a couple of hours fishing and Romana's like, OK, I'll just go get that beast and come back. So Romano leaves, walks about the British countryside. Romano's like, hmm, yes, hmm. Here's some birds. Here's some growling. Romano finds a statue, which is the piece. Instantly finds it and just, what well, we, we're good. But then gets attacked oh. by a, a, a weird Yeti thing, which is strange. And then that Yeti thing is attacked by a space, space knight with a space rapier. And he's like, are you OK? And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. And he like kind of hits on her a little bit. And these are his woods because he's a big old rich person with a rich person estate. But then he takes the timepiece from her and he's like, everything here needs to be registered. And then you can have it back. My name is Grendel, by the way. And that isn't foreshadowing at all. He's upset that the statue is fucked up and is superstitious about it. Also, I'm taking you to my castle where we are where we will fix your ankle. So the princess, he princess carries hers away and off they go. Meanwhile, the doctor is fishing. He falls asleep and then he's attacked by someone else who also has a space rapier. And there's also a space pope, but he's being charged by the prince Reinhardt or whatever. And he lets them know about the electronics. So he's like, sir, can you fix it, android? And the castle, by the way, that Romana is going to is escape proof, just so you know. Uh, figured I'd mention that. Romana is placed on a bed and is asked about the stone again, but the engineer lady comes up and goes, this is amazing, who did it? I want your face. Meanwhile, the doctor scarf keeps getting burned because the blonde kid with the sword keeps like stabbing him and Romana goes please no don't fix please just fix my ankle and the doctor is oh, being told my little um, ankle oh my ankle <laughs> and the doctor no little is, German Romana <laughs> don't go in there you will break your ankle like every other actress on the show oh, oh my, my god, god. This, these hills are filled with frolic and ah <laughs> ah, okay, anyway. So, the doctor's going to be t paid to replace and fix an android that has no face, but because of reasons. Romana and the, is told that she, she's an android, and they're like, no, I'm not. And the doctor's like, what? Uh, she's like, oh, you're not an android. Okay, cool. Uh, that makes more sense. Can you keep your you can keep your head then? The doctor then asks what the android needs to be fixed for and also why it needs to wear the specific face that looks like the prince that is going to be king. And he's like, because Grindel will probably try to kill me. So we need an android to be sure that we're going to be at the right place at the right time. And maybe he accidentally kills the android. Who knows? Um, Romana hides the stick of, of, of finding pieces in her sleeve and then it is knocked out when injected with sleep. And so the doctors, the yeah, she's injected with sleep and the stick of finding things. So, mm -hmm. so the doctor says, uh, okay, cool. Let's all drink and, and cheer for each other and totally don't get knocked out or poisoned. And then they go, oh no, we've been totally knocked out or poisoned. And they all collapse and fall over. Uh, and the doctor stumbles a little bit because he's a little bit, I guess, stronger than the rest and also collapses in front of a door. And then the door is Grindel. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fine. 
So, <laughs> the story is, uh, if, if anyone with uh, any sort of history of English literature with novels and shit would probably instantly recognise, hang on a minute, this story sounds a little bit familiar. It's Winnie the Pooh. Is, is this the Prisoner of Zender? And I would say yes. It is the ninth, the 1894 adventure novel by Anthony Hope, The Prisoner of Zender. Uh, they were initially going to do a little bit more of a straightforward adaptation, but um, something happened the year previous to make more overtly science fiction kind of cooler. Mm -hmm. uh, gee, what could it be? Could it be the movie... Star Wars? No. Um, this is the first time that Star Wars has kind of really influenced uh, Doctor Who, in a way, uh, because it um, exploded. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah. It, well, it did, but it also in a, in a, in a weird kind of way. It's like adventure serials were always sort of like your Flash Gordons and everything were still really slow, whereas like. Uh, in comparison, Star Wars was like lightning fast with everything. Like everything had a point. Everything was like to the point and fast and action packed. To like, it wasn't slow, boring uh, as, action scenes. Like the action was tight and and and, and exciting. As you do. Um, as you do. Yeah, yes, of course. But of course. Uh, so basically, they 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 took elements of it. Obviously, they couldn't make it as fast as you know they wanted to mm -hmm. like now star wars tends to be remembered as that film with all the effects or like you know the <laughs> film with the merchandising but if you look at it back when it was written in the late 70s uh and you know stuff that it was inspired by like flash gordon and errol flynn's type stuff mm -hmm. there's nothing really better to compare it to like science fiction meant down-to-earth dystopianism oh like, yeah uh running man all that sort of shit oh yeah uh instead of space opera so most people perceived it as, like, a modern swashbuckler instead of what we would call sci-fi. That's what they kind of compared it to, because, like, everything they had before was, like, you know, that sort of adventure serial stuff. So it's like, oh, this is a new one of those. This is a swashbuckling adventure. Whereas, like, in retrospect, it's not really that, but that's the closest thing they had to compare it to. Um, That's what... That's why this is, like... Wait, what do you mean they took inspiration from Star Wars... It's this. It's the this type of swashbuckling science fiction. Um, mm. uh, and because it's the BBC, it's theatrical, not cinematic, so the props that they had uh, with, for, with swords were not lightsabers, but they were, you know, standard fencing swords with electrical capabilities. That sort of shit. Um, which, you know, science fiction on a budget. <laughs> uh, and also, you know, it wouldn't cost any more money because they could just take some props from some historical that the BBC is currently doing and, you know, Bob's your uncle. As you do. As you do. Well, they did that regularly. Like, a lot of the times, they would just go, hey, uh, we have these, like, it's just like Star Trek. Like, the reason Star Trek, the original Star Trek, had certain episodes based on, like, oh, this planet is a planet of Nazis, or this mm -hmm. is a planet in, of, of gangsters from the 1940s, is because they had those sets and costumes laying around. So they were just like, this will be cheap to make a story out of. Um, it was very fairly common practice back in the day. Nowadays, yeah. you don't really see that sort of shit anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but uh, even, even, even things like the laser crossbows, uh, <laughs> you know, instead of, yeah. Yeah, instead mm -hmm. of instead of like uh, stormtrooper like bolts, they're beams. They're not mm -hmm. like bullets. They they they're still shooting beams to some degree. Uh huh. Um, but you know that's that's it. But yeah, the, based on the prisoner of Zender of to some degree, which if you don't know, not really you know some massive story. It's just a story about a king being drugged on the eve of his coronation and unable to attend his ceremony, and then you know political hijinks ensue. About oh, I thought it was of, like, about uh... oh. A this... boy and his his teddy bear that he loved dearly. You know, they when find he... an English gentleman on holiday in the country who resembles the monarch, and he acts as a political decoy in effort to save the political situation. I have no idea what you're talking about. I, it's um, Winnie the Pooh. That's what you're referencing, right? 
all the oh, political doing agenda. Oh, you back to that. <laughs> I okay, fine. Sorry. I didn't realize you were doing a callback to that. You just you just said, oh yes, it's about a story about a boy and his bear, right? I'm like, how can I yes end this? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, what I do call- you mean a boy and his bear? Where the fuck has this come from, dear? Because it comes from Winnie the Pooh. How dare you. Oh yeah, the thing you also pulled out of nowhere. <laughs> I would just, I just tried to think <laughs> of the most off the wall, like old s- story that I could come up with, and Winnie the Pooh just came out into the public domain. So I was like, that Winnie one. Winnie the Pooh's not that old. It just came into the public domain. Yeah, but you know, compared to the, to the, you know, the, the prince. Uh, okay, prince of, of, but uh, what I'm uh, saying is, it's the oldest one I could think of. A- aside from like just saying like Hamlet. So you can't think of any... Really? What? <laughs> Hamlet. Ham- we'll get to Hamlet. Oh, anyway. mein God, Hamlet. <laughs> Hamlet Fishingville. Anyway, what happens in the next part, dear? <clears throat> so the doctor is woken up at rapier point, and he's called the traitor. Uh, and the prince is apparently gone and kidnapped, and they have no idea how, and the android is fine, by the way. So what's the plan of attack, sir? Uh, that's dumb that you just think we want to attack we have the android so get that crown there you go also they're like that's dumb and also we have a secret passage that we totally know about that we can go and use and he's like but what if the android breaks down or what if somebody finds out about it doctor you're gonna be with the android at all times and the doctor goes "Eh," and goes outside and calls for (laughs) canine who wibbles his way here and the android is supposedly perfectly working but outside a bird is calling because canine is here and the doctor pretends to kick the the prince for a moment and gets a sword drawn at him which gets canine to attack the sword guy uh well deserved also we have no idea what where the Frick Romana is. It's been over an hour. She's probably with Grindel, so that's not good. Romana's been asleep for like 12 hours. Doesn't know why she's here. And he's like, follow me down the stairs and look straight into the cell. It's some lady that looks a lot like you. And it's the actual Princess Strella who will... Also, the Count will marry her and then murder her because, yeah, he also fucks one of his servants. But let's go talk to the prince. Uh, He's, of course, thinks she looks like Strella, but he's also running a fever and Romana is going to be his nurse. His forever nurse, of course, because she's chained to the fucking wall. So, okay, bye. Let's go to the the coordination. Uh, The doctor sends K-9 to Grendel's castle. The doctor stays here to go to Tara. And the sword is dude is frustrated. He can't talk to androids, but... It's because the speech thing and his brain is turned off to conserve power. And he's like, eh, what androids are weird. And he's like, mm-hmm. androids think the same thing about humans sometimes. And then they found out mm-hmm. uh, why, what they wanted. And a knight is guarding it. So blonde knight goes to stab him a lot. And then there's a crossbow that fires electric bolts and blah, blah, blah. Grendel's engineer, Lamia, also known as Snake, uh, is working on an android. Snake! <laughs> by the way and isn't sure about the piece of time crystal and pokes at it but it is unremarkably apparently like diamond or otherwise and there's a whole bunch of noise that triggers anyone's tinnitus which is great canine is at grindles because uh he has found romana through the wall which is exciting wagtail yes good romana by the way is making friends with the prince suddenly some knights come in and take her away violently Trouble with the trolley eh yeah yeah all right, then. They're having some trouble. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Where was I? Uh, uh, <laughs> come in and... Okay, and then the doctor is in the secret tunnels. The good old Black Plague tunnels. Uh, you know, those ones. And too bad some guards have found them and knocked out Grin- the Grindel guard. No. Oh, no. The Grindel replaces some of the guards at the coronation, and he has a bit of a sit on the throne. He's like, ah, yes, this is so comfortable for me, specifically me. And the coronation seems to be running late. And also some of our guards are dressed up as peasants in order to lie. And the Rainbow Space Pope, by the way, comes. He goes, hey, the prince is late. Uh, We might choose you as king instead. And he's like, oh, <laughs> this wasn't at all planned. I kind of don't even know. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> anyway, down in the tunnels, the android prince runs into a rock repeatedly for a bit, but then they get attacked, and the doctor's trying to pull a switch that hasn't moved in however long, and it's all terrible. And we talk about offering the crown to someone else, to uh, again, to Rainbow Pope, and also, what if we just offer you the crown now? And he's like, no, let's do everything correctly. But upon opening the doors when the time is here, there he is, it's the prince! Everybody kneel to the prince, who's now king, I guess. Too bad Grendel sort of notices the prince being weird and falling over and going bzzz, and the crown on his is on his head now. So he's king. Oops. Uh, so now we turn on the androids, speaking bits, and he fucks up a little bit, but it's fine. Romana, dressed as the princess, I assumed, comes forward and, or maybe the princess, I don't know, offers her loyalty to him. And the doctor goes, no, and fucking smacks her in the head, killing her. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> That's what happened. She's gone forever. She's gone forever. Gone, but not forgotten. Uh, no, we'll forget her. In like a season. Oh, you could never forget Romana. Mm, anyway. So, as you have may have guessed, Grendel is the name of the monster in Beowulf. Uh, the names Mortgard, Thorvald, and Freya are also blatantly Nordic. Tara is an Irish kingdom, but nobody's quite sure which one. And... Alemia is a snake woman yep. sent to hypnotize and capture men, as in the poem by Keats about duplicates and temptresses. Uh, you, also can, note the snake-like I, makeup on her, which is can, why she has Can I? Weird... Can I say something? The reason I know yes, what a Lamia, Lamia is is because of fairy tale. Fairies. It, fairy tale. Why? I don't want to know. I don't want because to know. One of, tale, want because to know. one of the guilds is called Lamia Scale, and I'm just like, oh, it's snakes. So, the fishing rod that uh, the Doctor had in the beginning was actually a valuable antique, uh, oh. and Tom Baker lost it in deep water. He wasn't <laughs> keeping a, a grip on it when casting, and uh, uh, they had to put on diving suit and recover it before the insurance men found out. <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah, uh, 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 so, uh, Terry Walsh, uh, body double, uh, also doubled for Mary Tam Romana when she's on horseback, so when you see her right away on horseback, that's actually, uh, a, a, a stunt man in a wig. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, the, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. Another thing as well, one thing that I didn't actually realize until I read about it, uh, Till, the the sort of uh, gruff hunchback uh, peasant who controls the gates and everything, mm -hmm. he actually has another connection to Star Wars. Do you remember, dear, the original, original version of Star Wars where there was a scene where Han met Jabba the Hutt and it was a human? No. Well, you'd only know if... <laughs> In the original version, because, like, the minute after the original theatrical release, they changed it to be the slug. Um, okay. But originally, uh, Jabba the Hutt was actually a man, and there was a scene in A New Hope where Han went to see him and say, like, hey, I, I'll, I'll get you your money, I'm just doing this big job first, blah blah blah, that sort of thing. Uh, and then when they re-released it, they CGI'd slug Jabba in there, on top of human Jabba. Um, Till played human Jabba, which... You know, fucking good for him. Uh, but yeah, it was it was cut from the original. It was a deleted scene originally from Star Wars. But then you know when they huh. weirdly they updated the deleted scene to have CGI Jabba. It's really weird. This, the special editions are really fucking weird of Star Wars. Um, I kind of actually anyway, like the human Jabba the Hutt ha having. Googled I like him, him too. But I also like the fact that he's a slug because it suits it. It, it adds a lot more the universe, and also the world of the huts is a lot more interesting, because otherwise it is just, oh, everyone's a human. Oh, alien is just human. Mm. Which is, which breaks the sort of it, it makes science fiction boring when every alien is just a human. Ah. Um, even, even if it's just like, a human with, I don't know, some sort of slight, like a, like, you know, with Klingons. Yeah. They have Klingons back in the original Star Trek were basically Ears. just humans with no humans with bumps on their forehead. 
Oh, um, the Klingons. Or yeah, Vulcans with the ears. Yeah. yeah, Vulcans with the ears. Something like that, where it's like, okay, and then you can do something different. Whereas, like, mm-hmm. if it's just humans, it's kind of boring. Anyway, that's the rant about that over. What happens in the next part, dear? Uh, well, the doctor's killed Romana, so he's tried for murder Good. and sent to the Hague. Hug. Hug. Hague? Hague. 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 I said a Hague. A hug. A Hague. A Hague. <laughs> You know where I'm a hugger and a what kind of what kind of be? Why do we always go to these hug. jokes? Why? A Hague. Why? Nine eleven. The Hague. Freaking okay. Anyway. Well, I mean, those that committed nine eleven would have gone to the Hague. <laughs> anyway. A doctor's like, look, this bitch ain't the princess, it's an android. And so I didn't kill her. Um, also, it would probably be in order to get close to the kill the king and blame Grendel instantly. So let's just postpone the king making, I guess, because maybe there's other androids here. Also, why is the king not talking? Who the fuck are you, doctor? Grendel is like, wah, and sent off. And they're worried that they won't be able to fix the android in time for tomorrow. Meanwhile, Romana is brought in to talk about the timepiece. Also, it looks like something bigger. Hmm, this is weird. Grendel comes in, just admits seeing the doctor, and Rwanda's like, oh, the doctor? Literally outing herself in seconds. Uh, so that's great. Mm-hmm. Time to remake the android down to every detail, by the way. K9 shows up, and the doctor goes, yeah, she's in the castle, by the way, and the prince and the princess, too, probably, and the prince has about three hours of time to do things. What? The prince will have about three hours of time to do things? Okay. Uh, the <sighs> prince android will have about three hours of time to do things, is what I meant. And Grindel sends someone off to kill the doctor instead this time. The doctor is introduced to someone, and Lamia is someone is in Grindel's whatever is like the coward is power to <laughs> Lovely notes. <laughs> Boy, okay. And she's offered them a deal. She wants to be escorted out of the country in return for Romana. And of course, it's a fucking trap because they have the perfect model of Romana now made as to an android. But now it has a laser crotch. And as soon as the doctor speaks, he'll be killed. Romana sneaks herself a syringe when they're not looking. And she heads back to the cells. Uh, the prince is dying still. And Lamia is horny for Grendel. But Romana is just like, he's using you. And she's like, bitch, I know. At least I get to see him. And the doctor and K9 have headed to the meeting place silently before anyone else. Romana is unlocking the prince because she's learned to lockpick and to run the fuck away. And he's like, no, save yourself and tell uh, that one dude. So, uh, yeah. And we fake the prince dying and Romana escapes. Grindel and all his men are ready to fuck up some shit. And they send Romana droid. I I made this name and I can't even pronounce it. Roman Roman Android Roman Android into the house while Romana is escaping and takes the Count's fucking horse, but she doesn't understand horses and thinks telling it go will just work and it doesn't. And then she kicks it and it goes. Lamia is excited about the kiss that she just got, but is confronted by the Doctor instantly behind the door. So okay, the offer is real. Bring in Romana. It's a fair offer, so go in, and then they bring in Romandroid, and and she tries to kill the doctor, because K-9 no- noticed it wasn't Romana. So let's just attack the building and accidentally kill Lamia. Oops. They yell for him to surrender and lie that he'll be fine if he comes outside, and K-9 goes, what the fuck you doing? And the doctor walks out to die, and then runs back inside and goes, you're fucking liars. So K-9 starts a uh, laser starts to laser a way out the back instead but upon seeing the princess on a mm-hmm. horse they hold fire and wait no it was actually romana because now they she has the doctor oh god we need to all run very quickly but then they arrive at the princess oh, golly, castle and then grendel has also fl- followed but it is under the flag of truce and you have to obey the flag of truce and he mentions he knows the prince is an android and the doctor is like what's up you want to talk what's up Grendel mentions that the doctor will stop being useful after a while and probably be killed and maybe he should be king and then he, the doctor is like uh, Grendel just told me like the worst shit uh, he's a traitor but then Grendel just fucking stabs the android prince while his men steal Romana and then they fuck off into ah! the distance ha ha Yes, just like that. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, 
That's, yeah. It's it's literally just like that. Yep. They go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So, uh, so Mary Tam actually plays four roles in the story, which is kind of unprecedented. Uh, she plays Romana, Princess Strella, uh, and then R Android Romana and Android Princess Strella. Uh, however, she's only credited as Romana, uh, both on screen and in the uh, Radio Times of the time. Which, hmm, okay. Uh, this is also the only story in season 16 where the search for the segment of the key isn't actually the main part of the story. Uh, which... You know, it's an interesting way to shake things up. Uh, to not have every story be, we have to find the segment. It's like, whereas this one, it's like, hey, we found the segment. Now we have to get out of here alive. Mm. Um, uh, fun, funny thing as well. Another person in this was Cyril Shaps, a an actor who plays the Archimandrite, the, the rainbow space pope. Uh, he also played uh, John Viner in The Tomb of the Cybermen. Uh, the uh, Lennox in the Ambassadors of Death and uh, Herbert Clegg in uh, the Planet of the Spiders, and this is the only story in which his character doesn't die. <laughs> nice. Every other story, his character dies, but this is the only one where he doesn't. Um, David Fisher, as well, was really proud of Crank Count Grendel and decided to have him escape death at the climax, so he might potentially be brought back for a return appearance. Although uh, no such story was ever formally planned, so it was just more like a hope. Uh, they also a new hope were hoping for a more complicated yes, uh, they were hoping for a more complicated ending, but they had to abandon it at the last minute because the location they had chosen, Leeds Castle in Kent, not in Leeds, because you know the fucking Britain, uh, yeah, uh, became the venue for Arab-Israeli peace talks. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, the large number of you know members from various different countries. Uh, arriving there meant, uh, you know, waving around swords and crossbows was not allowed. So they had to no. change uh, locations of the ending at the last minute. No. <laughs> uh, the Taran would beast as well was the the look of it looking really fucking weird was due to there being no money in the budget for a bear costume to be made. <laughs> uh, so they had to hire a bear costume from a costumer, and then they changed it slightly. Oh it's no! Not. Good. Good. Uh, also, David Fisher initially hoped that Tara might be populated by animals resembling creatures of legend, such as unicorns, which might be natural or mechanical, and originally en envisaged Till as a dwarf rather than a hunchback, sort of like a, a, a myth more mythical creature type uh, people. But again, money. Money is very hard. Mm. Uh, and also, although Mary Tam was a skilled horseback rider, she refused to doing the horseback riding sequence herself because she could not wear a a helmet during it uh, to protect herself mm. and she was like i don't if i can't do this properly with proper secure like safety material then i'm not doing it at all yeah like, okay get the <laughs> get the get tom baker's body double we'll put him in a wig <laughs> uh, when? Uh, but yeah what happens at what next? time was christopher reeve paralyzed 1995 uh, never mind well, this is 19 19 this is 1978, so a yeah. long time after this. Yeah. No, I just, I, whenever I think about, like, horse accidents, that's the first one that comes to mind, so. Um, I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, the doctor takes a look at the android, and the others are frustrated that they all trusted him, uh, the, the, the Grendel, by the way, at all. Um, and meanwhile, the Rebendal. prince prince is brought back Romana, and she is put back in shackles. And he mentions that he's going to marry Romana to the prince, so that he can kill the prince, then marry her, and then kill her. So Grendel go tells the Rainbow Pope that he's going to be married to the, or there's going to be a marriage to the princess. So let's hurry up this marriage because the prince is also actually dying. <laughs> you remember how he was sick yesterday? Nope, he's dying. Meanwhile, the real princess is just sewing, and he offers again to marry her, and he's she's like bitch no she thinks so long as she refuses to be married to the prince slash king he will be safe also grindel walks over and goes hey i have 
of the Royal Princess, by the way, and it was all arranged. But you fucked <gasps> it up. But Romana, if you refuse to marry me, the prince, the prince and princess will die a slow death, and that's not what you want. And she's like, oh, okay. And the doctor is given a gun, and he's like, now nah, I'm good. And then he just boats his way into the castle with K9. And the plan is now all in place. We have everything ready and perfect, so let's bring the prince up to marry. The doctor is in the sewers, sneaking in by cutting through a wall with canine. The prince attempts to attack Grindel when he comes in, but he's like, don't you fucker do anything stupid. And then the don't doctor is like, we really need to get through this wall, canine, please hurry up. And he's like, uh, you've told me to be quiet, sir. And so they're led through the catacombs and the doctor is broken through the wall now because there are so many stairs. Canine is left in the boat. Poor canine. He's claptrap all over again. So Ramana and the prince kneel to be buried. Meanwhile, the doctor is sneaking around, steals something from Lamia's room, uh, the timepiece, obviously. And we ask the whole, who will marry? Is it you? And the doctor goes in and goes, hey, don't do that. And the, they fuck around for a bit. And Grendel's like, why, why are you here? Fight me. And he gives him a sword and then they fight. And it's an actual sword fight. And it like goes on for a long ass time. <laughs> Having watched actual fencing, there's multiple times where the doctor has quote unquote won, but it's fine. He wins at it's one point. To the death. He gives him the sword back. The fight continues. It's a whole ass thing. Romana, during all of this, sneaks out, following one of the guards. The prince has pulled the door to the gate so they got his guards can come in and fight everybody. The sword fight has made all their way the way all the way down to the sewers for some reason, in which Romana has also followed the guardsmen to the jail cells and he goes into the princess's room to kill her and Romana's like tip, tip, no and the princess and Romana both save each other <laughs> and the doctor sword fights Grindel off the bridge and he falls in the water and I guess dies I don't I, I don't know oh god we need to check on the princess so we get down there and we just see them vibing together talking about uh, needlepoint and the doctor busts in and goes hi princess we gotta do some stuff and the prince and the princess smooch oh okay uh, here's the timepiece uh, where is it? Oh, God, doctor, please use your stick, Romana. You got to use the chalk, Romana. And then she use does. Use the chalk, <laughs> Romana. And he's and he's, of course, fucking with her because it's in his pocket. And he's like, oh, I wasn't able to go fish, so I'm going to be a dick. Uh, but where's K-9? Oh, God, where's K-9? And then they run outside and K-9's on a boat spinning in tiny circles. And that's yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the androids of Tara. Yes. It's an episode. There are androids. Mm -hmm. it, um, they're on Tara. Yeah. And pff, the Doctor gets caught up in a political conquest. Woo! It's, uh, it's a lot. A lot happens. Yeah. A lot doesn't happen. Yeah. But a lot does happen. Yeah. A lot doesn't happen. Yeah. A lot does happen. Yeah. So what do you think, dear? The androids of Tara. Eh, I gave it another seven, honestly, like because another seven. I'm I'm down for some more stupid fantasy sci-fi. Like this is this is kind of a melding of like things you like and things I like, and I'm just like, okay, I could maybe watch something like this mm -hmm. if it was completely like this. I could maybe watch it. And so there's so oh. there's the chance that I would. Huh, there's a chance that I would rewatch, you know, this episode potentially with you at some point in our lives, but eh, probably not too soon. Probably not like tomorrow. So seven. Fair. Seven. Yeah. That makes sense. So that's the Android Zatara. Mm -hmm. Next week, uh, season 16, serial five. Yep. The blank of Kroll. Uh, the not what that the hmm? the blank of crawl k r o w l uh do i get a hint at all uh no okay. well okay maybe i can um uh a cot <laughs> A, a, a concept? Oh. Uh, um, 
rise. Close. Beginning? You get two more choice. Ch mm. No, you, you're getting cold. One more, ch one more chance. But I... How... Wait, um, so rise is close, but beginning is not? When I say it's close, I don't mean like, oh, you're right around the corner. I mean, you're kind of on the right track, but you still got a long way to go. But beginning is nowhere near it. <laughs> the force. Um, oh, you were so close. The power of Kroll. Okay, well. I went with the meme answer, and I should have gone with the meme answer the second time instead of the first. Third, whatever. You Yeah, you would have, yeah. Well... Next up, the power of Kroll. Who's Kroll? Why do they have so much power? Do they actually have a lot of power? Who knows? Hmm. We'll find out. Let's Maybe. find out. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah,